And hello, everyone, and welcome to Rich Sports Talk. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program today. Happy to have you before New Year's Eve. Uh, just want to get talking. I'm going to change it up a little bit. You know, this channel, I like to talk a lot about different sports, and primarily I focus on the New York Jets because I'm a New York Jets fan. However, I do love to talk about the New York sports scene, and one of the teams I love to talk about is the New York Giants because – they're a football team. I think there's a lot of great storylines about the organization. They, of course, have such a rich history. And, of course, like I've done a lot of stories on the Giants before. Like In terms of doing mock drafts, I do full mock drafts for them as we approach the draft season. I do draft analysis on the New York Giants. And it's been pretty interesting, especially with Dave Gettleman as their general manager over the past couple of seasons. But the New York Giants are in a situation that many fans are worried about, and they have every right to be. And if you can read in the title, this is going to be a moment in Giants history that could really determine the fate of this franchise for the next few years and possibly next decade going forward. And what do I mean by that is that the New York Giants, through multiple reports, have basically made it clear that they are bringing back Daniel Jones and Joe Judge for the 2022 season on the surface that might not seem like such a bad idea. That might seem like, hey, there's continuity. These are guys that have played within the system. We're keeping a head coach. But if I'm a New York Giant fan, I would be terrified. Because to me, the New York Giants are about to become what the New York Jets have been for the past decade. Now, a lot of people say, oh, come on, Nolan. That's crazy. That's not going to happen. I mean, the Jets have been a tire fire. The Jets have been a disaster. The Jets have had bad hire after bad hire. They've been an absolute mess the last decade. Well, the past five years, both teams have had the same exact record. And for me, I think it's going to get worse for the Giants than before it gets better. And let me explain. The New York Jets were in a very... I wouldn't say similar situation, but they were in a situation back in 2012 where they were coming off some lean seasons. And again, this was just two years removed from being in the AFC Championship game twice. So it really wasn't like the Jets had had a long history or recent history of failure. And the New York Jets made a decision that would alter their franchise for the past decade. And the Jets have been picking up the pieces since, and they really did not get it right until this season. When that season was over, the New York Jets made the decision to move on from general manager Mike Tannenbaum. However, they basically kept head coach Rex Ryan and said that the new general manager had to keep and work with Rex Ryan. Giant fans, is this sounding familiar? Basically, John Mara has said the same thing. He's going to keep Joe Judge, and there are reports that he believes Joe Judge is his Bill Parcells or Bill Belichick. Uh, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but let's just focus on this. So what happened? The New York Jets couldn't get a great general manager candidate. Why? Because certain people didn't want to work with Rex Ryan and they wanted to call the shots. And the best the New York Jets could do was John Idzik, who was a cap specialist for the Seattle Seahawks. How'd that work out? The Jets had some of the worst drafts you will ever see under John Idzik. And we're not even just talking about bad players. We are talking about historically bad players. I mean, there are players from his drafts that never played in the NFL. And on top of that, even if they played for the Jets, they never played in the NFL again. Like that, That's how bad the picks were. And for me, the Giants are about to make the same mistake. Because if you are a good general manager, why would you take the Giant job? Because for the Jets, ever since that moment, two big things happened. One, the general manager and the head coach were not on the same timeline, and that threw everything off. And I've been saying that about the Jets with Joe Douglas and Robert Sal, and I said this is really year one for them because you finally have, instead of Douglas coming in under Adam Gaze because they couldn't get along with Mike McCagnin, and basically you've had general managers and coaches not on the same page and with different agendas, now you finally have a head coach and a general manager on the same page and a general manager who hired the head coach. And they both picked the quarterback that they wanted. 
And for the Giants, it just looks to me like it is going to be an absolute mess. Because if you're a prospective candidate, what do the Giants have to offer you right now? Now, the first thing Giant fans are going to say is, well, we have two first-round picks and both are going to be in the top 10. Hey, that's great. But that's it. The Giants are in cap hell. Looking at over the cap, they're going to be $2 million of cap space going into the next year. And the problem with them is they don't exactly have contracts that they can just release and open up the cap space. They're going to be tight under the cap. And you've also now had the ownership and the head coach already announced that they're keeping the quarterback. If you are a general manager and you want to take this position, don't you want to have say in the quarterback? Like, what if you are picked as the Giants general manager? And let's say you go to New York and you've done your homework and you go to John Mara and you go to Joe Judd and say, look, I know you like Daniel Jones. I know you think he's great, but I've been looking at this class and I like Malik Millis. I like Pickett. I, I think that they have higher ceilings and will be a better quarterback for this organization than Daniel Jones. What do you do then? Because it's clear that the organization, Joe Judge, or both want to keep Daniel Jones. And this is the problem. Because you're going to have people with different agendas. And the problem that happened with the Jets was because you kept the head coach and moved on from the general manager, you're basically telling that head coach that he's all-powerful, that that head coach has the final say. And that that final and that that head coach is more important than the general manager. Instead of them both having equal title or the coach reporting the general manager, you basically just said, "No, the head coach is in charge." In the NFL history over the last decade, how has that worked? It didn't work for the Jets and Rex Ryan the first time. It didn't work when Bill O'Brien won the power struggle in Houston and had one of the worst trades we've ever seen, DeAndre Hopkins. It didn't. It isn't working in Seattle, where Pete Carroll has taken basically over the personnel duties. That has been a disaster. And even Bill Belichick, the greatest coach of all time. Why were the Patriots drafts so-so for years? It was because Bill Belichick took over the draft. This year, he changed it back to letting the scouts, letting people in the organization work with scouting, and focus on that department and listening to his scouts. And surprise, surprise, the Patriots had their best draft in the last probably five years. We've seen these head coaches, and the idea for them getting more power is great. It is a great idea. But unfortunately, they're in a situation where the head coach now feels like they don't have to answer to anyone. Like, you could tell Rex Ryan didn't didn't believe he had to answer to John Idzik. And both of them were on different timelines. Rex Ryan felt like he needed to be in the playoffs. He needed to win games. John Edzig wanted to do a full rebuild. Mike McCadden and Todd Bowles were on different planes. Then you had Adam Gason basically was helped brought in. It wasn't brought in by Mike McCadden, but was brought in by the owner. And they didn't get along to the point where after the draft, where McCadden made Adam Gase sit in a room by himself, basically they had to move on from because they saw how toxic the relationship was. Just getting some questions in the chat, Justin Jets. I think the Jets are in a better situation than Giants right now. Absolutely. Jets hope and dreams all fall on Zach, though. Uh, I agree. But again, a lot of this Giants situation, too, is it's going to come down to like the, the like I looked at the situation like if I was a general manager, to me, the Giants are the worst job right now because they have a head coach. You can't pick the head coach, and you can't pick your quarterback. And if you're going to be an elite general manager, you want that say, and you want that final power. But then the other thing that plays into this, too, is could the general manager basically be on a different agenda and not get along with the head coach? Like, I thought about this, and... I don't think like a general manager would ever purposely sabotage his head coach, but I could see a general manager making a little bit easier for him and not for his head coach. And what do I mean by that? Like, I think we know that this isn't a great quarterback class, but if the giants hire a new general manager from the outside, and again, this could just be someone that they hire from the inside, just as an inside guy that basically is a yes man to Joe judge, which in some ways is almost even worse, but let's just say they hire a general manager. And the general manager 
wants to, of course, pick his quarterback. And, of course, they can't do it this year. Daniel Jones, they've basically made it clear he's coming back. So that general manager could be sitting there looking, saying, well, this isn't a good roster. We're in cap hell this year. We can maybe start making the cap a little bit better next year. I have two first-round picks. If I can turn one of them into another first-round pick next year, like we did with the Justin Fields trade, and put myself in a position to get a quarterback in next year's class where I feel it's better, and when we've had another year of Daniel Jones, like I don't believe in Daniel Jones. I don't believe in this head coach. So why am I going out of my way to basically try to win this year when I know this isn't a good roster and when I know we're not going to win with this quarterback and the staff? Why would I put that pressure on me? If I punt on this season and move the picks back and get more picks for next year, that just helps me find a quarterback. Because I don't see the Giants, if they hire a general manager from the outside, firing that general manager after one year. Because that's going to make it even harder to find a good general manager. So basically, you told one general manager that he had to keep a quarterback, keep a head coach, didn't get any say in picking a coach or a quarterback. And after one season, you decided to move off from him. Yeah, that's a really attractive job for people that want to move their families and also attractive for, I mean, you only get so many opportunities in the NFL, but if you were to look around the league for general manager openings this upcoming season, if the Raiders move on from Mayock, that could be a very good one. The Bears are a good one, even without a first-round pick. I mean, that should tell you everything you need to know. The Bears that don't have a first-round pick is a much more appealing job than the Giants with two first-round picks because they have some cap space, they have their young quarterback figured out, and a guy who you believe can be a good quarterback. What about the Giants running back? He was the second pick in the draft. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, that Gettleman has been a bad general manager. I don't think that that is the debate. And what I'm really talking about right now isn't that Gettleman has been terrible. He has been. I mean, we know that. I'm talking about the position that the Giants are in going forward. And I'm talking about that they are in a position where the Jets made this mistake, which is they didn't clean house. And I know it was tough because Woody Johnson loved Rex Ryan, and Rex Ryan was incredibly popular with the fan base. But if you had hindsight to go over and do it again, I think the Jets would have cleaned house. And the Jets all made that same mistake again with McCagnan, where they kept McCagnan and brought in Adam Gase, which didn't make any sense because McCagnan didn't have a track record of being a good general manager. And they basically brought in that pairing and it was doomed to fail. And look, it failed horrifically. And right now with the Giants, they are in a position too where what is appealing about the Giants? And I do get that they're is an aura and this mystique around the Giants. But to me, that's gone. I mean, that hasn't been the case since 2011 in the last 10 years. I mean, they have been a bad franchise and they are in a position where they can't get really good quick. I mean, they have good draft assets in the first round this year, but they don't have a ton of draft picks and they have zero cap space. I mean, they are redoing guys contracts during the season just so they can fit enough people on the roster. We're signing Cal- uh, Galladay or Corey Davis. Uh, that's easy. It's Galladay. Galladay was more money, more guaranteed money. And, I mean, Corey both got hurt this year, but Corey Davis, you could tell. Uh, I know the drops he had, but, again, he looks like at least he's a solid number two receiver. Uh, and, he like, he made plays this year. I mean, Galladay, like, what did he do this year? Um And look, like, even bad teams in the NFL, like, I look at the top five bad teams right now. They look like the top teams picking the top five. I mean, the Jaguars are a mess, but they're going to get a new head coach. They're going to get basically, they. I mean, they're keeping the front office staff, but again, they have the first round pick. They are team rebuilding. They got young talent. I mean, the Jets have a plan. The Jaguars have a, hopefully, a generational quarterback and a top asset. The Lions are playing their butt off. They have a bunch of draft picks, and they have a quarterback that, for the time being, can hold it down until they feel they can draft the right quarterback. But again, you look at the Giants, Out of you look at all the teams in the bottom. They have What do they have? Young quarterbacks that they believe in or hope will be good. They have draft picks and cap space. Giants have none of that. The only thing that they have is a young quarterback, but... 
It's a quarterback that can't stay healthy. It's a quarterback that I believe many of the fans have soured on. And unfortunately for that coaching staff and that organization, it's going to be a tough sell for that fan base because I think that this fan base is done with Daniel Jones. And it's unfortunate because I think Daniel Jones is a quarterback that he's a funny guy because for me, even when I scout him in college, like you loved all the tucks. You see all the tools. And this is one thing about the NFL is you you see guys like this all the time where their tools are unbelievable, but for some reason they just don't add up. Like you look at Daniel Jones' arm, you look at his athleticism, you look at his size. And you go, well, this guy could easily be one of the better quarterbacks in the game. But he can't piece it together. He can't figure it out. He doesn't have good pocket awareness. And again, he can't stay healthy. And one of the big things about the NFL is you need to be available. Um, Giants have nothing to look forward to. They have to start from the drawing board. And again, the Giants are in a fortunate position where they just can't blow it up. I mean, a lot of the problem is because Dave Gettleman knew he had to make the playoffs. And this is one thing I said after the draft last year, which was a real head scratcher to me, was the Giants organization just seemed like they didn't know what they wanted to be last year. And again, this all goes back to the season before, which was a mirage, unfortunately, for this organization. Because this organization, because they were in the playoff picture and could win a division, thought that they were a really good franchise. But here is the harsh reality. They were a 6-10 football team. I mean, that happens like once every 10 years where you get a division that is so bad and dysfunctional that someone gets into the playoffs with a losing record we saw last year. Instead of the Giants saying, you know, we have a young team, we're doing okay, but we still have a bit to go. They went all in thinking that they were a playoff team. Like, this wasn't a team that was 8-8 and and missed the playoffs or 9-7 and that missed the playoffs. This was a 6-10 and team. In a year where you basically had Dak Prescott miss the entire year for Dallas. And look, Dallas has had an unbelievable resurgence, but you had to know that they were going to be better when Dak Prescott came back. The Eagles were playing a rookie quarterback and had a ton of injuries, and they are playing better this year. And even Washington, Washington tried to upgrade the quarterback position, and even with Taylor Heineke, they've been a better team than the New York Giants this year. And that was the thing, like, everyone was, and I never got this, like, I get because of Joe Judge's opening press conference, and because they played teams close last year, people were in love with Joe Judge, but I kept saying, you guys do realize that this is a 6-10 and football team, right? And I almost gave, gave more credit to Patrick Grant because the defense was unbelievable last year. But again, as a head coach, you want an identity, and the Giants don't have an identity. They just don't. And unfortunately, they can't blow it up because they're going to keep Saquon Barkley. They're going to give him the fifth-year option, but their contract situation, they're $2 million over the cap this year. But again, a lot of their contracts aren't expiring contracts. They're in the first or second year where all the money's guaranteed. Leonard Williams' contract is guaranteed. Adore Jackson's contract is guaranteed. Kenny Galladay's contract is guaranteed. They're stuck. They don't have guys where they can just cut them. I mean, they can finagle with the cap, but the best they'll maybe get to is 10 or $15 million. But that's maybe two decent free agents and probably one great free agent. Um Everyone here, Joe Hodgson, get them likes up immediately. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate that, as always, for joining us. Dallas is the class of the NFC East. Absolutely, Nick. And that's the thing that I think has to be terrifying for Giant fans because this was a team that last year, once again, it was a mirage that this was a playoff team. But look at this division. Washington feels like they're a quarterback away from being really good. Taylor Heineke has proven he's a nice player in the NFL. He's a great story. He should be in the NFL, but really he should be a backup. Like he would be an elite backup. Like if you need to start three or four games and need an adrenaline shot to keep your team going, he'd be great. But they need a franchise quarterback. And look, I know they got absolutely embarrassed by Dallas last night, but they've also been decimated with injuries. Chase Young out with the ACL, obviously. But you look at them, you're like, okay, 
They got Terry McLaurin. They got Antonio Gibson. They got good young playmakers on the offense. They have a good young defensive line. Like you see the vision and you see what they're doing. You're like, okay, if they get a good quarterback, if they get a decent quarterback, they could be very good. And their team to keep an eye on not only in the draft, but if like Jimmy Garoppolo becomes available, I think that he would be a big upgrade for that team. You look at Dallas. Dallas hit a grand slam on two defensive picks, and they look really great. And Dak Prescott came back healthy and is playing like we thought he would play. He's looked unbelievable this year, and Dallas looks really good. And even Philadelphia, who I don't know what to think of Nick Sirianni. I thought he was going to be an absolute disaster. But again, the one thing I'll say about the Eagles, they have an identity of the Giants, though. You know the Eagles aren't a great throwing team, but you know they're going to run the ball down your throat, and that's what they've done this year. Um, Justin Jets, and again, guys, for those of you new to join the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there. We do a lot of content on New York football, um, so we'd love to have you guys in the chat and get your feedback. Love answering your questions again. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Of all the bad teams, this is a good one. Texans, Jaguars, Giants, Jets, Lions. Who do you think is the best chance to become a playoff caliber team next year? Um, In a weird way, I mean, I think the Jets are kind of close because they're going to have all the cap space and draft picks. But again, their division is so tough with Buffalo, New England, and Miami. I, I could see the Jets. That's being like an eight and nine team next year, but competing and in the hunt in December. Um, to me, the team that could, and this is a big caveat, is if somehow Aaron Rodgers retires or moves on from Green Bay, if he leaves Green Bay, then I think the Lions have a shot because that division outside of Green Bay is kind of a mess. But uh, that obviously is dependent on Aaron Rodgers. Man, like that stuff. Like, I don't believe in the Jaguars. But again, if they get the right head coach, I would say if I had to pick one without Green Bay, probably Jacksonville. And the only reason I'd say Jacksonville was just because that division so bad. Like, I still don't trust the Texans. Um, I don't love Ryan Tannehill. Like, the Colts are a, a good team organization i think they'll win the division again next year in that conference in that division but i mean could the jaguars go 2-0 and against the texans maybe somehow sweep the titans for four wins and sneak into the playoffs as a seventh seed i mean that's possible but yeah that's a tough question because uh, a lot of those teams they have a long ways to go i mean one uh, giants i think are the lowest on that list um because again like you listen to the players right now, like it's amazing. Players just seem dead. Like the players seem uninterested. They don't seem to want to play for Joe judge. And the other thing too, is this is the other thing I'd be concerned about too. And I talked about early in the episode about coaches getting this power and coaches at letting you go to his head. Like Joe judge, you could tell it's changed with him over the last three or four weeks. He's gotten a lot more defined in the media. He's got a lot more defined in the press conferences, and when did that happen? It was about the time when the reports came out that he was coming back. So he knew he was coming back. And because of that, I do think that that, that does show that he feels that the organization believes in him and that he's running the show. Because again, I do think Dave Gelman is going to be let go at the end of the year. I don't think the Giants will fire him. I think it will be a retirement from Dave Gettleman a forced retirement, but a retirement just to, you know, help with his legacy and to ease the transition as opposed to just firing him. I could just see that being the case. Like I would be shocked if it's not them just saying, Hey, you know, yeah, he decided to retire. So, um, but again, like if you're a giant fan, like I, I, I love that a lot of people like giant fans that I have like love to pick on the jets and the jet fans and love to point out the flaws. And I'm like, well, you do do realize we have the same record the last five years, but this is the situation I look at right now, which is they have seen this happen with the jets before, and they're going to make this mistake again. And I understand they're worried about the backlash of firing another head coach. I understand that they're worried about, you know, not being relevant because again, like this is a 
organization that is at its lowest point. And I would make the case right now that Giant fans are in a worse state than Jet fans. Because at least with Jet fans, and I know the frustration is there. And trust me, I've seen in the comments, I've seen in the chat, and I've seen on social media, the frustration is there that this is still a bad football team. But at least with the Jets, they have a plan. We've seen parts of that plan work. We see a vision and like there's at least what seems to be a plan and at least the Jets seem to have some direction about where they're going. The Giants doesn't feel like they have any direction. To me, I think that this team still feels in their heart and this organization feels that this is a team that should be in the playoffs. And I look at that roster right now and I go... I don't see it because like the Jets, they have been decimated with a half a decade. The Jets really a full decade, but really the Giants have been decimated with horrendous drafts. Absolutely horrendous. And look, Andrew Thomas seems like a fine pick now by Dave Gettleman. But I mean, you look back at the drafts and even like this last year's draft, like this was the one thing about this year's draft that when I did my analysis for the Giants draft, this was one of the first things I said was Dave Gettleman must know something that we don't know. Because to me, he was on the hottest seat coming into the season, but he traded back to get a first round pick for next year. And I said, like, he must feel pretty confident he's coming back in 2022 because if he isn't, that pick trade to me doesn't make absolutely any sense. And of course, Now, in retrospect, it doesn't because, again, this was a team that if they felt they needed to make the playoffs and Dave Gettleman felt that this team was a playoff team or he might lose his job, why was he trading back for future asset back to 20? Like instead of trading up to get Devontae Smith, instead of trading up to get a receiver, instead of trading up to get... Mika Parsons, who's been a dynamic player. And again, I don't think he would be the same player if he was on the Dallas, on the Cow. I'm sorry. He would be the same player on the Giants defense that he is on the Cowboys team. But again, he would be an impact player on a defense. And instead, they traded back to 20 to get a receiver. When you looked at this draft, there was a lot of great receivers in this draft. And you traded back and you got Cardarius Tony, who to me looks like a bust. Because again, this is a a receiver that had a huge game, but we've seen him with some concerning stuff off the field, the stuff with the vaccine and training camp, the stuff about not getting the ball after the first two games. I mean, there's a lot with Cardarius Tony. And again, this was a guy that didn't have a touchdown catch. And the Jets took Elijah Moore in the second round and Elijah Moore missed significant time because of an injury. And Elijah Moore has six touchdowns this year. And Elijah Moore looks like a game-changing wide receiver for the Jets. And they got him with the 34th pick. And right now, Cardarius Tony is having trouble staying on the field and isn't really making an impact. And again, I understand the quarterback play hasn't been great. But you look like they're, they've they been trying to get Cardarius Tony the ball. And it just hasn't worked. So again, like you look at this roster like what about his appealing as a general manager because when you come in as a general manager you either want to come in with a team that you feel is on the cusp of the playoffs or a team that you can completely gut and rebuild in your image and the Giants are at a point like right now where they're they're not a playoff team but you feel they have enough talent that they're not going to be one of the bottom five teams next year um just looking at the chat. And again, guys, if you have questions, make sure to reach out in the chat. We'd love to hear from you Giant fans. Like, what are your thoughts? Do you want Joe Judge back? Are you happy he's back? Are you angry that he's back? What are your thoughts on Daniel Jones coming back? What about the rookie QB class in 2021? Gene Fields, Jones, Wilson, Lawrence, and Trey Lance. Who do you think will end up with the, having the best career? And um, that's way too early to tell. Again, there's so much that goes into that. Um, to me, it's going to be about the organizations that they're in. Like, can they put the pieces around them? If you had to put money on it, I would say when you talk about that's the other thing too, when you talk about the best career, um, if we're talking purely wins and losses, probably Mac Jones by default, it also depends on how long Belichick coaches, but 
I mean, Belichick is an unbelievable coach. And I just think that Belichick, you saw it last year, even with COVID and Cam Newton basically shot. I mean, they won like eight games last year. So, um, again, like if you put the right pieces around in the stats, I mean, maybe Wilson, Jones, Fields, or Lawrence. But, again, it comes down to the organization's. Uh, Giants fans going high when they suck. I'm a lot of Giants fans. They're blaming injuries for the reason they suck. Again, I mean, the Giants, like, I get the injuries, but also, like, every team has injuries. I mean, for the for, look at the Jets. The Jets have had over the last – people kill the Jets, but the Jets over the last month have had the most players, per, the highest percentage of the players on their cap, which means their salary, on the IR. It was higher than any other team. And they literally won a game this last week where they had 20 guys on the COVID list, not including all the guys they had on IR. I mean, they were literally pulling players off practice squads around the league just to fill out the roster. So, and again, I know Giants injuries have been huge this year, but again, they don't have depth, which goes back to the front offense of the general manager. They don't have, like, they're not elite at really any position. They're good. Like, I think they have a good defense. But do they have an elite pass rush? No. Do they have an elite run defense? No. Do they have a great secondary? No. I mean, they're good. And then again, like you're looking at certain players that you were hoping would break out this year. And that hasn't happened with Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley. Um, And again, I think Saquon Barkley is another cautionary tale. Like if, you are taking a running back in the top 10. You better be a team that, like, look, he's a missing piece. Like, Ezekiel was kind of a missing piece for Dallas, so that's why it made sense. The Giants, that was, if I was running the team, I almost would have fired Dave Gelman after that draft because when he made the comment after the draft saying, I didn't even answer the phone for the number two pick. That is negligence because we saw in that same draft, the Jets to pick the third best quarterback. So the Jets would get their third choice of quarterback, give up three second round picks to move up three spots. What if a team called the Giants because Sam Darnold fell the second and offered the Giants three first round picks? What if the, some team, like, because the Broncos apparently loved Sam Darnold. They had the fifth pick, and they w- and they wanted to jump the Jets. What if they said, we'll give you five this year, we'll give you a one, we'll give you three ones? Nope. Too good to answer the phone. So, like, to me, like, when, and when he made those comments ever, I'm like, this is going to haunt Dave Gettleman because if unless Saquon Barkley becomes one of the top five running backs in the NFL and the Giants make the playoffs in the next two or three years, this pick's going to haunt him forever. And it has. Um, hate to see McGovern go down this last week. Yeah, it's going to be tough for the Jets. And of course, guys, we'll be doing the Jets preview on uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Make sure you're here tomorrow. We will preview the Jets Buccaneers, some of the Jets getting off the COVID, coming back to practice, which is good. But again, Tom Brady in the fight for a playoff spot. So that could be a bit of a blowout at MetLife. So we'll, we'll get to that tomorrow. But again, for the Giants, like I, I just laugh because, again, you always hear that cliche, like those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And like the Jets are in their market, they're in their building, and they have shown the Giants that what they are trying to do doesn't work. And the Giants are in a worse situation than the Jets because they don't have cap space. The only thing they have that's appealing is two top 10 picks. And again, I think the only way that's attractive is if you allow a general manager to come in and pick his quarterback. And if you basically have said that Daniel Jones is coming back and you're telling these general managers like, yeah, you might love a quarterback better in this draft than Daniel Jones, but you're sticking with Daniel Jones. Um. So I just think that that is a situation. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat. It's kind of funny. But um, but again, like I just look at the situation for the New York Giants and I go, they are about to repeat what the Jets have done. This is one of the reasons the Jets have been a terrible franchise and have been a laughing stock for decades because of these decisions. And 
unfortunately for the Giants, like it's bad now, but how they are handling the situation could mean it potentially gets a lot worse. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our content. Of course, if you're a New York Giants fan, we will be having plenty of mock drafts coming your way. I was holding off until the end of the season, but that will be coming in the coming weeks because, again, I thought that this team would be looking at a quarterback. But given the recent reports that Daniel Jones is coming back, I think we can now start to look at how this team will attack the NFL draft, even without Dave Gettleman being in charge. So a lot of great content coming your way. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on the channel. Looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great New Year's. And again, guys, we're back tomorrow with the Jets preview against the Buccaneers. And if you want more New York Giants content, make sure to comment below. What kind of stories would you like me to talk about? Would you like to talk about the 10 worst moves that Dave Gettleman has made in his career or the top 10 Giants draft picks that they've regretted over the last decade? So much to get into. We will have polls on the community page. Make sure you check those out. Until next time, guys, this is Nolan Rich, and this is Rich Sports Talk. Thank you so much for joining us today.